Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you how to use ADX or Azure Data Explorer commands to manage the, uh, the tables inside of ADX. In this video, I'm going to show you a new set of commands, the Custo Query Language, often abbreviated as KQL. Uh, Custo was actually the original code name for Azure Data Explorer, and it retains its name here in this query language. It was named for the uh, famous deep sea explorer Jacques Cousteau, but it's spelled with a K, uh, so it makes it easier to find on search engines. Now, uh, I'm going to use something similar, a similar set of data that I did last time. I had a table called customers. I'm going to drop that table and recreate it. It looks pretty much the same, except that I'm going to use add this year to date expenses right at the start and ingest the same data here with an extra column here for those expenses. And if I query that right here, then I'll see I've got 10 records here, um, Tim and Steve and Steve and Larry and Jeff and Steve and Satya and Bill and Scotty and me, all famous technologists, as you can see. <clears throat> and this, this line right here that I showed last time, this is actually an example of KQL. It's just the name of the table by itself, and it will return every column and every row in that table, which can be useful, but I'm going to show you how to refine that a bit. I'll go down to the bottom here and type customers, and then I hit carriage return, and notice this little pipe here. The pipe is serves the same function that it does in a bash script. It says the output of this will be the input of the next part of this query, and in this case, I'm going to use the next part will be take, so I'm going to say take three. That's who take five, old Dave Rubeck tribute there and that says I only want the first five rows um, and this can be useful if uh, if I have a gazillion rows you know wait, a ton of data that has to come back I'm not really interested in all that data and that data might take a long time to return in fact uh, there are actually limits to how much data ADX is willing to return but if I'm only interested in just seeing a sample of that data, sometimes just take five or take a hundred is a very fast way to get some information back so I can look at the data and see the structure of it and see, you know, what kind of information is in each of these columns. And that's really useful sometimes. The other way uh, is if you want to do a top end query, and I'll show you that later on when I talk about sorting. Um, in fact, let's talk about sorting now. Let's do that. I wanted to, I'll say customers, and the phrase for, for sorting is order by, probably see us, those of you that are familiar with SQL, probably see some similarities here. And if I wanted to order by, let's say, uh, full name, for example, then it'll return them by that full name. And you notice it's in descending order by default. Um, so this is exactly the same as this. It returns exactly the same data. Descending is the default. I like to, when I write my queries, I like to explicitly say descending to make it clear what order it is, because when I first started working with it, I was uh, expecting ascending as SQL does by its default. But if I want ascending, I have to add the ASC clause at the end of it. Now it goes in ascending order that. And I can do this by, let's say, let's do it by um, uh, year to date sales. How about that? That might be interesting in descending order, which is the default. And if I only wanted like the top three in year to date sales, I would say take three. So now you see these are my top three revenue producers among my customers. And that's a useful query right there. All right, let's get rid of that and talk about um, filtering. So if I have all of these here, maybe I only want those that have um, ordered after a certain date, for example. I'll use the where clause for that. Where? Uh, last order date is greater than, I could use greater than, or equal to, or less than, or whatever you want. And I'll make that uh, date time of, oops, date time of 2022-01- let's say, uh, looks like that goes from the 2nd through the 11th. I only want those that are on the 9th and later. And there they are. So this is a way of doing filtering and of course we can combine those order by full name ascending that's perfectly legitimate right here the output of this is input to here so now we got a filter of it and then i sort that right here now it's possible right now what i'm doing is i'm i'm returning every single column maybe i don't want every single column 
maybe I want only certain columns. And the way I can do that is with the project keyword. So if I only want the full name and the year to date sales and the year to date expenses, and that's it, then I can uh, I can just do that. Now notice this is this is not going to work. And the reason is because this, the output of this will be the input of that. Well, I'm not outputting the last order date and therefore I cannot filter on. So if I try to run this, I get a, it doesn't know about this column. So in order to do a filter on that, I would need to have that as one of my projections right here. All right. Um, you can also do, uh, let's get rid of the filter there. Um, calculations, calculated columns. And there are a couple of ways of doing that. One of them is I could say profit equals and then put my calculation in here. So year to date sales minus year to date expenses. So if I do that, now I get this extra column here, which is simply the difference between this and this column right here, one minus the other. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is with the uh, extends keyword. And I said extends, but actually extend singular. And I'll get rid of the comma at the end here. And I can do that. And this is useful. There are a couple of ways this might be useful. One is, let's say you had a calculated column here, and you you know, wanted to use the output of that as the input of this. Then you would have to use extend to do that. Um, the the other is that uh, if you didn't really feel like projecting everything, you wanted every column, but you also wanted to have this calculated column, then extend will do that. You don't have to do a project. If you omit the project, the default is to just return every single column. And by adding extend, I added that extra column called profit. All right, the last thing I want to show you is, or the last uh, clause I want to show you is aggregation. And aggregation is when I want to roll these things up so I get uh, one value or one row for each unique occurrence of a value, and then I'll do some aggregation function on that row, like a min, a max, an average, something like that. Uh, what, so the way I do that is with the summarize keyword. So customers, summarize, and I'll say, how about the uh, uh, sum of year-to-date sales by postal code. I want to know how in each postal code What's the total sales in each postal code? That's that's how my business works. I, I target postal code. I got one salesperson per postal code, and that works. It looks like the folks in Redmond are, are you know they're buying a lot of stuff, and this guy out in Chicago, he's he's just kind of a slacker. Uh, uh, certainly, the sales guy's not doing his job. So I can roll that up here, and of course, I can filter that uh, before I do it if I wanted to. Maybe make it faster. Maybe maybe just exclude certain data and things like that. So as you've looked at this, you've probably noticed a similarity to structured query language, SQL, that we use for querying relational databases like SQL Server. And, you know, there are some differences, of course. You know, some of the keywords are different, and we put the table name at the top instead of near the bottom as we do in SQL. But there is a, you know, the folks that built, designed this tool, they recognized that there are a lot of people migrating from SQL to KQL, and so they added this word explain. And explain takes a you can, it allows you to just add a SQL query, like select full name, comma, um, YTD sales from customers order by full name. Just some SQL that I'm we know and love, and execute that, and that will actually return a KQL query right here. So I can take this here and copy it. And it will run a 
Got to get rid of that comma right there, and it will run that query. That's the query that I can run. So this is a great tool for those of you who know SQL and are just learning KQL. It's not 100% one-to-one. Not everything will work this way, but for simple queries like this, it's a great way to get up to speed. So in this video, I've shown you how the basics of Kusto query language, KQL, and how you can use that to sort and order and select columns and aggregate your data. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.